I did a blind A-B test between two mixes, one with 49 instances of analog modeling plugins and one with just three plugins. In the comments, many people were confident that A was the analog modeling mix, but even more people were confident that B was the analog modeling mix. I left a link to a poll below the video so everyone could vote and now we have over 500 responses. That's a little less than 10% of the people who watched the video, so thanks for everyone who voted. And so now, here are the results. As you can see, it's basically just a wash. Uh, what do you mean it's a wash? What do you mean, what do I mean? Look at the chart, it's obviously a wash. I guess a couple people more voted for B, but it's not like 90%. It still looks like it's within the realm of random chance. No, it's not. Your N is five times your percent scale. That's a reasonable amount of power. Your P is like 0.003, which is highly statistically significant. That's a Z score of around three. Three standard deviations from the mean is not gonna be the product of random chance. If you say so, what does Z score mean? Just face it, dude. Even using a strict alpha of 0.01, your null hypothesis has been wrecked, bro. Okay, well, thanks for explaining that. You've been wrecked, bro. So I guess people could hear the difference then. But wait, what mix was B? <gasps> so it turns out that what people were expecting to hear from tape emulation and Neve style EQ was actually just found in a cramping old stock plugin called Re-EQ and what they were expecting to hear in the sound of an 1176 was actually found in my free compressor plugin. Speaking of my compressor plugin, not only can you download it for free from my website, it's now also completely open source over at GitHub and there's also a Linux version. But now that we know which is which, let's listen again and see if our perceptions change. <laughs> Did you hear those mixes differently now that you know which are which? So there was a statistically significant trend in incorrectly identifying the analog modeling mix. However, that's just the first question. There was also the question of which one people preferred, and that might be a different answer. It's conceivable, you might be able to identify which one was the analog mix, but you prefer the digital mix instead. So here, the stats work a bit differently. You'd be forgiven for thinking that there's a slight tendency towards preferring mix B. It looks that way on the pie chart. However, that's not exactly how statistics work. When we calculate the p-value, we get around 0.58. That means that this result was not statistically significant and it could have just been the product of random chance. So this question, the second question, is actually a wash. People didn't really prefer one or the other in a statistically meaningful way. So what have we learned here? Firstly, people can hear a difference between the analog modeling plugins and the non-modeling plugins. However, their expectations of what that should sound like don't seem to align with the reality of the sound produced by the analog modeling plugins. And secondly, there's no real trend of what one people prefer. So when people say analog modeling, plugins sound so great, they're so open and clear and pristine, detailed, transparent, rich, vibey, vintage, authentic, all of these adjectives that the plugin manufacturers have currently on their websites, whatever sound that actually ends up resulting in, there doesn't seem to be any evidence, at least not that I've seen, to support the idea that people actually prefer whatever that is. So what we've done here is to perform a study. 514 participants is a good sample size, and just because we did it on YouTube, it doesn't make the research any less valuable. So I thought, anytime I do something like this, why not turn it into a formal study? So that's exactly what I've done, and you can download the study as a PDF from my website. So sure, this hasn't gone through the standard academic peer review process. However, you can freely download the study, you can try and replicate these results with your audiences, make a response video, and in my view, that's a pretty solid democratized form of peer review anyway. If you didn't see my three-part video series, The Compressor Scam, check that out. The second one is the most important. 
Alternatively, here's a video which YouTube thinks you might like.